Good evening and thank you for joining us on this historic night here in Atlanta, the longtime home of civil rights icon John Lewis. We're standing in front of the Ebenezer Baptist Church where today former presidents, the Speaker of the House and friends and family all came together to say goodbye. The senior pastor here called Lewis a true American patriot who loved America until America learned to love him back. Three former presidents spoke, but it was President Obama who delivered a rousing eulogy, using the moment to speak to the cause of John Lewis's life, voting rights, saying those in power are trying to discourage voting. And that appeared to be a direct response to President Trump, who floated the idea today of delaying November's election, something he doesn't even have the power to do. Well, tonight, there's also a reminder of the surge of cases of coronavirus nationwide. For the third night in a row, Florida has broken a record for deaths in a single day. The virus is also hitting home for the president. Herman Cain, one of his staunchest supporters and a former Republican presidential candidate, has died from COVID-19, six weeks after attending a packed rally for the president. Well, as we come on the air, more than 151,000 people have been killed by the virus here in the U.S., and there are more than 4 million confirmed cases nationwide. It all comes as the American economy suffered another crushing blow today. The GDP dropped nearly 10 percent, falling at its fastest pace in history. Well, there's a lot to get to tonight. We have a team of correspondents covering all the news. And we're going to begin here in Atlanta with CBS's Michelle Miller. Good evening, Michelle. Nora, John Robert Lewis served this community for more than three decades. And in this homegoing service, it was a reflection of his years of service. He was willing to fight in the struggle. A celebration of life. He was willing to get in good trouble. For a man dedicated to justice. He loved America until America learned how to love him back. We celebrate John Lewis. Congressman John Robert Lewis, his casket draped in the American flag, returned to Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, the place where he worshiped with his mentor, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., King's daughter, the Reverend Bernice King. We praise you, O oh God, for this nonviolent warrior who fought for true peace. As hundreds watched outside, inside former presidents paid tribute. We live in a better and nobler country today because of John Lewis. We honor our friend. And America's first black president delivered his eulogy. America was built by people like that. At the ripe old age of 25, John was asked to lead the march from Selma to Montgomery. He was warned that Governor Wallace had ordered troopers to use violence. But today, we witness with our own eyes police officers kneeling on the necks of black Americans. George Wallace may be gone, but we can witness our federal government sending agents to use tear gas and batons against peaceful demonstrators. But even as we sit here, there are those in power who are doing their darndest to discourage people from voting. Obama called on Congress to strengthen the Voting Rights Act that Lewis fought for nearly six decades ago. You want to honor John? Let's honor him by revitalizing the law that he was willing to die for. We shall overcome. In the front row, Lewis's only child, John Miles, wiped away tears as friends and family remembered him. He truly made an impact, not just on America, but on the world. John Lewis was my hero, my friends. Let's honor him by getting in good trouble. In an essay he wrote before he died, printed in today's New York Times, it was Lewis himself who had the last word. Emmett Till was my George Floyd. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. 
And Michelle Miller joins us now. And when he says, now it's your turn, he was really trying to inspire the next generation. That's right, Nora. CBS News has learned that in the last month of his life, the congressman was very busy uh, making phone calls, writing letters, I've read them, to activists in the Black Lives Matter movement, the women's rights movement, telling them, pick up the torch. It's now your turn to carry the mantle. That just gave me the chills. <laughs> me too. Michelle Miller, thank you.